Welcome to your yoga mat. Thank you for being here. Today we are going to do a yoga as healing practice to help with anxiety and stress. And the inspiration for this topic came up as we were getting ready to go back to school, back to school night. Um, my middle daughter going into middle school and our youngest son is actually transitioning into a different um, elementary school. And so as I walked with my daughter on back to school night in particular, it was just her and I, and we are in the car driving there, and she just one thought after another, and luckily she was at least verbalizing it outside, outside of her body, because you know, it's probably even worse going on inside, but she was just like, what if I can't find my locker? And what if I don't know how, how to get, like, what if they don't let me go to the bathroom? And what if it's a real emergency? And she just, you know, just kept going and going and going. And we all can relate. I mean, it may not be school, but it's work or it's a conversation we have. And we just keep, the real keeps going and going. And I said, Kira, I finally stopped her. And I said, I asked permission, which I'm working on doing that. Do you mind if I, do you mind if I give you a suggestion? And she said, okay. And I said, what's, what's something you could do to interrupt that pattern? Because obviously you can feel, you can hear yourself saying it over and over. She's like, I could do that finger thing. You guys remember when we did the finger breathing? If you don't, maybe go back. I can't remember which class I did it in, but basically you're just breathing and sliding your thumb down each, in and up each finger. And so as you inhale, you go up. As you exhale, you go down. As you inhale, you go up. Exhale, you go down. And I was like, yeah, do that. And every time a thought keeps coming in, I want you to just go back and just go back to the finger breathing, okay? So today's practice is about anxiety. It's a healing practice, which I usually, we do all of our things primarily seated and laying down. There are gonna be a couple of poses that are standing. And there are a couple really beneficial poses for anxiety that are standing poses. And some actually work a little bit with balance because balance poses actually do help ground us and bring us back to center and practice being calm even as we feel a little bit wobbly. So I encourage you to have a block today. If you've, if you've got one around, just grab it or a couple books. We're gonna start in a nice easy seat, okay? Let your hands rest on your legs as your eyes, if it doesn't feel comfortable in your body to close your eyes ever, even when you're invited to do that in yoga, oftentimes at the beginning and the end, you can always do a soft gaze down at the floor. Sometimes when we're anxious, it's actually better to keep the eyes open and just soften the gaze a little bit, okay? So I want you to begin to focus on abdominal or deep belly breathing. So as you breathe, notice the breath in the abdomen. Sometimes it's even helpful. You see me take my hands onto the sides of my ribs. And they sometimes call this chi belt breathing, where you kind of squeeze just a little bit so you are able to give yourself a little bit of feedback and something to almost breathe into. Do it if it's helpful. Keep your hands on your legs if that's better for you. If your hands are still on the sides of your waist, you can let them come down. And now I want you to see if you can move your breath from your belly to your ribs to your heart as you inhale. And from your heart to your ribs to your belly as you exhale. So belly, ribs, heart. Heart, ribs belly. So it's another really powerful technique you can do to help just calm you is to really kind of visualize the breath moving a little bit more thoroughly through the entire uh, cavity of the torso. Now, if the mind still feels a bit agitated, 
can use the mantra, breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. One of my favorites from Zen master Tai Nhat Han. Breathing in, I calm my body. I'm visualizing those three areas. And then breathing out, I smile. And you can say it, you can just feel it. One more time. Breathing out, I smile. Good, take your hands together in front of the heart. And just gently start to rub the hands together. So again, a little bit of shaking or movement when we're feeling anxious. Anything to interrupt the pattern of pulling us out of the moment. We start to move prana a little bit. And then let your hands, instead of covering the eyes or anything, I just want you to now let the palms come together. And you might notice a little bit of energetic flow between the palms, a little bit of heat. If there's an intention you want to set for your practice, take a moment. And then let your hands come down to your legs, bow your chin towards your heart, and inhale, lift your chin, open your eyes. Good. I'm sitting on a cushion here. I'm going to take that out from underneath and set that off to the side. And let's switch the cross of those legs. All right. And take your arms up towards the sky. Big breath in. Bring them into the heart. Exhale. Again, breathe in. Now, if you are in a workspace, exhale, or you can close the door, even doing three to five of these, inhale. You can already feel how it opens up the lungs, exhale. One more, breathe in. Exhale. This time we will circle up, but we're gonna take it to a twist. So inhale, reach out. And exhale, twist to the right, exhaling right hand behind you and your left hand will come to your right knee. Spine tall, breathe in. Bend your elbows out to the sides a little bit, trying to enhance the awareness around that rib cage a little more. Keep your left hand on your right knee. Let your gaze bow more towards the floor and stretch your right arm up and over. Keep your right sitting bone down. Turn your top palm towards the earth. So you open up the waistline also into the back here. Now you're going to keep the hand on the knee, but bring your head upright and let this right arm drape. And then you're just going to take a nice, easy neck stretch, letting your head gently fall towards your right ear. If it's too much on the neck with the hand reaching on the knee, you just let the arm come by your side the elbow under your shoulder. Relax your jaw. Breathing in. So as much as you would like to keep using that mantra, breathing out, I smile. Keep bringing it in as you practice. Good. Now keep your head like this. Take the forearm off. Make a fist on this right temple and gently bring the head back up to neutral. Don't want to overwork that mind. Inhale, reach the arms up. And we're going to go to the second side. Now, if you wanted to switch your shins, we were kind of sitting with the other shin in front quite a while. So I'm just going to keep mine. But if you want to balance out and switch them, you can. Left hand behind you, right hand to left knee, chest tall. So notice if your arms are straight. And then even just, you may not be able to see mine a ton, but a little hint of a bend out to the sides. You're going to perhaps feel more expansive ooh, through the rib cage. And if you don't, that's okay too. Keep the right hand on the left knee. Reach your left arm up and over. Gazing more down towards the floor. Keep the left sitting bone anchoring. And it, it, this to me is not about how far over. You're not trying to reach the floor. Just go to the point where you start to feel some stretch. If you go too far and you get more anxious, then it's not, not helpful. Bring the torso upright. Let the left arm drape over the top of the head and very gently just letting left ear fall towards right sh left shoulder. Left ear, left shoulder. Breathing in, I calm my body and breathing out, I smile. 
Good. Now again, take this top arm down, make a fist, and bring it to your left temple and gently bring your head back upright. Good. And then we're going to turn around to all fours, cat cow. Tabletop, pad the knees with a blanket if you need it. I don't always say to grab a blanket, but those of you that need blankets for padding ever, just grab those and have them handy. Cat and cow, belly drops, heart lifts. So this is actually, not only does it just feel good, but it feels good for a reason as we're really starting to move and articulate the spine, exhale rounding. We're also opening up our lungs so you can appreciate the pose even that much more knowing that it has a very therapeutic component to the cat and the cow. As you feel the way that the spine moves in the different directions. And if you want to make a more circular cat and cow, I invite you to do that. So if you want to go around in a circle, we go one or two times in one direction and then the other way. Or just keep going front to back. So healing classes, really, we do want them to be healing for ourselves, for our own bodies. Come back to neutral tabletop position. We're going to stretch our right leg back, keeping the toes pointing down, the belly now drawing in. And as you exhale, I want you to draw your right knee towards your right tricep. I don't want you to go all the way necessarily. Just bring it in that you start to feel that core. And then extend the leg back. Now listen careful. You're going to come back to a modified deer. So we're going to push back through the hands. Your right shin is going to come down. It's parallel basically with the back edge of your mat. Your arms are going to stay stretching forward. And we're going to get a really big stretch through the right side of the waist as you bow the forehead down. Now we, we do need to get back up. So we're going <laughs> to repeat this a few times. So right leg, stretch it back into a half bird dog. And then exhale right knee towards right arm. Inhale, stretch it back. So you can see we're contracting here kind of on this right side. And then as the leg goes back and then we sit back, then we're really extending through the right waistline. And I'm already feeling, and we've only done two, my outer left hip starting to really wake up as you're having to transition. Exhale through these movements. So we're going to do about two more. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, modify deer pose. Inhale up, exhale forward, inhale back, exhale. Now you're going to stay this time. So go ahead and stay. Bow the forehead down. Walk the hands in closer towards this left knee. And I want you to move your left shin now so it's a little bit more parallel to the front of your mat. And bow again over this front leg. So hopefully you might feel a little bit more of a stretch now. This back leg, I'm kind of keeping more in the modified deer. It's not a 90 degree angle back there. My heel's in closer to my glute. Now, if I rotate this right frontal hip point more towards the floor, you're gonna feel the stretch a little bit more. If I extend my heart more forward, kind of bracing my right elbow against that right shin and send the heart forward, that's gonna increase it. Good. Now I'm going to take my hand and slide, help it out, slide the heel back in, walk the hands forward, inhale back to half bird dog, and then exhale, set that right knee down. Can you already feel a little something, something? Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk myself forward here a little bit. All right. Left leg goes back. Breathe in. Left knee comes towards your chest, towards your left arm. Inhale, extend it back. Exhale, sit back. Your left knee is basically going towards that right foot and your little catawankus. My hips are off to the side. My arms are stretching forward. Okay, and then you're going to push into that right shin. Bring it back up. Inhale, exhale, left knee, left tricep area. Inhale, reach it back. Exhale, modified deer. Inhale, exhale. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. If you have more time, maybe do about six to eight of these and you really feel the hips start to wake up. This time you're going to stay. Pausing for a moment here. Really walk those left fingertips forward. Get that nice big stretch there. So we're focusing first on those ribs and then walk your hands in closer. 
take that, I'm gonna grab it with my left hand to the right ankle, and I'm gonna scooch that shin forward. And I know, again, I'm, I'm off my mat here a little bit. If that's just bothering you, making you more anxious, just center yourself back on your mat. Rotate this left frontal hip point more towards the floor. Even here, you could turn your palms up and you could, you could do the finger breathing where you take the thumb towards the base of the index finger. As you inhale, you slide the finger towards the tip as you breathe in and you slide it back down to the base of the index finger as you breathe out. And then you go over to the index finger and you do the same thing. You slide it up and you slide it back. A little more physical inhale where the mantra is obviously more mental and then to the pinky and back good now i'm going to take my same hand that grabbed that ankle i'm going to bring it back in crawl myself forward back into the half bird dog breathe in exhale set it down breathe out good take a moment inhale take a moment and just breathe out exhale Good, step your right foot forward in between your hands. Now I'm gonna grab my block, you don't need it. I'm gonna put it on the inside of my foot and we're gonna swivel our left shin behind us. Inhale, come up to a, we a wheeling. A wheeling warrior two, a kneeling. <laughs> Gaze towards your right middle finger. Humor is a good way to a pattern interrupt when we're having a moment, so call a funny friend. I'm here for you. Hopefully you think I'm funny. <laughs> Breathing in. And exhale, breathing out. Now take your right hand to that block or you can bring your forearm on your thigh. I like my arm on the inside here because it just opens up my groin a little more. Stretch the top arm over. So you can see we're doing a lot of side body movements because it's helping to open up the lungs. As we open up the lungs, we breathe deeper. As we breathe deeper, it affects our nervous system. It starts to calm the nervous system. Now, if you want, take the block with you as you come up. Inhale, switch hands, put it at the back of your mat and reverse your warrior. Keep the right knee moving to the right. Open up your chest. Good, breathing in. Breathing out, we smile. Now you could also take your hand to the floor or your calf if you're a little more open here. Really waking up the side body. Good, now come up, Parigasana variation. Extend that right leg straight. Good, now exhale, right hand towards the floor. It's like a triangle a bit. Good, and then come up, exhale. And then back to like a reverse triangle, inhale. And exhale, you really feel your obliques having to work to come up from side to side, breathe in. If you want, you can even take the arm over the ear here. Exhale, come up. One more time. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, breathe out. Good, hands down to the ground in front of you. You're facing the long edge of your mat. Tuck both your toes, sit back on your heels for just a moment. Take a moment, breathe in. Take a moment, breathe out. Now we're just gonna spin to the back of the mat because you know what you're doing. I'm gonna take my right shin and actually leave it swiveled the same direction as you were just sitting. And then the left foot is gonna just come towards the back of my mat. So your right leg is actually really staying right where it is. Cartwheeling up, warrior two. Block here now in the inside, moving that over. It's probably there from when we reverse triangle. Arms open and exhale, sink a little deeper. So here, it's okay if you're Back hip is in front of that knee, because some of you are gonna need that to just feel that stretch, but if it's too much, back hip over knee and front knee over ankle. So as I go front knee over ankle here on the front side, that's where I really start to notice the stretch in my body. Yours may feel different. Left hand to the block floor, side angle variation, kneeling, reach the arm over your ear. Really gently here, create a relationship between your left leg and your left arm. Hug the arm against the leg and the leg against the arm. And as you do those two things, start to turn from the belly and open up the chest. Good, now take the block with you if you like. Switch it over to the other hand. Reverse your warrior, left knee staying left. Bottom shoulder staying out of the ear, shoulder blade gliding down the back, open the heart. 
inhale come up I'm gonna keep the block there we're gonna straighten the front leg inhale and exhale tip over into a variation of a triangle pose opening up the chest as you breathe in and then exhale come up good reverse inhale if you listen knees Oh, no, maybe it's going to pass. Exhale, come back up one more time. Inhale. Exhale. You know when you're just like on the brink of a sneeze and it's like itching so bad? One more time. Reverse. Inhale. Exhale, come up. Hands out in front of you. Tuck both your toes and sit back. Good. Take a breath in and take a breath out. One more time, breathe in and let it go. Good, circle yourself back to the front of your mat, swiveling your shins around. Tuck both your toes and we're just gonna walk back to a forward fold. So if it's easier in your body, walk forward. If it's you like prefer to go back, you can walk towards the back of your mat, hands to feet. Good, and then just start to sway it out. So block is helpful here. You can bend those knees if you like or need to. So Uttanasana, a really helpful pose to help with anxiety as well. All forward bends, very introspective. Shake that head out a little bit. Good, and then inhale. Send the heart forward a little bit, get a little more length in the spine, and exhale, refold. Bend those knees. Let's ragdoll it up. Keep your block on the right side of your mat if you, you may want it here in a moment, rolling the shoulders back and down. Inhale, reach the arms to the sky. Palms connect, look up, exhale, breathing out. I smile, heart forward, inhale. And our left foot's gonna step back and we're gonna spin the back heel down. We're gonna come up for a triangle, but let's come all the way up first. So triangle is actually a really great pose to help alleviate anxiety. The tipping movement helps to re kind of balance the flow of energy throughout the body. Also opens up the chest. So inhale, heart forward, and then hand down to the block or the floor. Tep left arm can go up towards the sky. You can have your hand on the shin, of course, if you don't have a block. Take a couple breaths. Can you soften these top ribs down just a little bit, lengthen a little bit more on the bottom waistline? And then look down at the floor. Now here's where I'm gonna throw a little balance at you. And I'm gonna show you variations if you don't wanna go all the way up to half moon, but we're gonna take a half moon. Step the back foot up. So we started with some of that core and the cat and cow to really kind of engage the belly. I want you to step the back foot up so both feet are still down, you're in your weight is in your right foot. Start to lift the back heel up so you're on the ball of the foot. Now you either just stay right here or even come onto the big toe and just stay there. Starting to just feel balance or maybe hover the toe. And those of you that wanna bring the leg up, Bring the leg up. Now this is actually a cooling pose. Left hand can go up to the sky and really helps to recenter the body. And I, what I love about it is I can't think about much of anything else when I'm in this pose. It requires all of my focus, which is a pattern interrupt because it gets us out of our thinking mind, hopefully. Maybe add the mantra in, breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Now start to bend your standing leg. Take your left hand back to the hip. Make that mini step back and then push into that right foot so you come up to standing and I'm holding my block because we're gonna just switch it around. Turn your right toes in. Turn your left toes out. I'm gonna set my block down there, left Arms go out to the sides. We're moving now to the back of the mat. We're gonna do triangle towards the left side. So reach long and then left hand down to the block shin or floor. Right arm up. Now if it bothers your neck, you can look down here. Keep drawing this left hip crease <clears throat> up into the socket. 
to help you extend the left side of the waist. So from your left hip crease to the armpit, it gets longer. The rib cage here can tend to arch. Then we contract in this bottom side. See if you can find the length in the bottom side. If you find your torso bowing down, bring the hand higher up the leg, lay the chest back. There you go. Take your top hand to your hip, bend that left knee, slide your block out in front of you. Step the back foot up. I want you to ground the foot first today. I know you probably don't normally do that. Just do, do it for giggles today, all right? You're standing into the left foot and you're gonna come onto either the big toe or the tippy toe. Take a breath, start to engage the right foot, maybe flex your foot as it starts to elevate up off the ground. Breathing in, you reach the right arm up, I calm my body and breathing out. You get to open the heart, you get to open the chest and shoulders in this pose, also making it effective for helping with anxiety. Carve that outer left hip under, you're gonna open the chest even more Another breath. And then hand back to the hip. Look down if you're looking up. Short step back, land the foot. You can leave the block there. Come up all the way to standing. All 10 toes are gonna face the long edge of your mat. Heels in, toes out. Hands onto your legs, slides your hands towards your knees. And just let the shoulders, if you would like, to come towards your ears. <coughs> Drop the hips down. And if it feels good, move a little bit side to side. If you want to dip one shoulder in, so you kind of awaken the lung on the back side. So as you breathe in, and calm your body. And as you breathe out, smile, awakening the posterior chain of the body. Very good, yogis. And then hands down to the floor. We're gonna heel toe the feet in and come to Malasana, still facing this side. Hands to the heart. Now if you need to, you can sit on your block. Hopefully it's handy. It's right there if you need it. Thumbs towards your sternum. And then take the hands behind you. We're going to come to butterfly or Baddha pose. If you need a blanket, something to sit on, you can. I invite you to grab the block if you have it and set it out in front of you. If you know you're able to fold forward, hold your ankles, lift your chest. This is a really beautiful pose. As we said, forward bends can really be helpful um, managing and working with anxiety. But this pose in particular, start to come forward is really helpful for encourage, encourages internal reflection. So as I share some of these things, hopefully now as you keep practicing other times, you're like, oh yeah, this pose, they'll just have a deeper meaning. And as they have a deeper meaning for us, then they can have even greater medicinal effects on our body and our systems. So if you are able to fold forward, and even if you can't quite get to the block, you could stack two or you could use your fists like I'm doing, and letting that third eye connect. And you can see how it's a pose that really does encourage that internal reflection. You might find that if you can get your forearms on the ground, don't force it, but if they will go, if you can brace the back of your upper arm against your shins, it'll allow you to, s to root the femurs because by pushing in the shins, it actually plugs the upper leg bones as well into the sockets. And you're gonna maybe feel your spine kind of spill forward a little bit more. You'll get a little more length and that'll deepen your hip opener. Really breathe in. Chi belt breathing, breathing through the sides of the waist, breathing in through the back body. Inhale, slowly come up. 
Let's extend our legs out straight. Now I'm gonna keep my block there and my feet a little wider so that my block is the tall way between my shins. Um, you could put a blanket under your knees here if you like, and if you're really open in the hamstrings, no props are necessary. Let's slide the flesh out from under the sitting bones. And bring your hands by your sides just for a moment. So in the danda, the staff. Now, dandasana pose actually gives you a great boost of energy. You can feel it's not the easiest pose. Like when we st sit here with your hands down by your sides and you lift your chest right away, different parts of the body are probably talking to you. Like, oh my gosh, it is so hard to sit up straight. Engage your legs, wake up your legs. Maybe take the hands, turn them behind you for a moment. Just Ah, like you're really breathing into the chest, giving that extra boost of energy. And then exhale, folding forward. Now the block, maybe for some of us, the forehead can come down onto the block, but again, not necessary. And you can also stack your fists. Those of you that can do forehead towards shins, that's fine too. Or some days I like to bring my legs together and do the block on the shins. Lots of options. Breathing in. I calm my body. Breathing out. I smile. Can you still connect and feel the belly, ribs, and heart as you breathe in? And the heart, ribs, belly as you breathe out. Let's come all the way up, breathe in, and slide ourselves so you're now, it doesn't matter which way your head goes, but we're going to come back to the, the long way of the mat, feet to the floor. Feet will be hip width apart in prepping for bridge pose. You're going to push down into those feet, inhale, elevate the hips, and slide the block underneath the sacrum, and you can go any height here that is comfortable in your body. Block is right at the top of the buttocks. Arms by your sides, or if you prefer to clasp your hands around your block, you could do that as well. This pose helps to, of course, open the chest. And any kind of inversion where the heart is higher than the head actually is very helpful for the ner nervous system. But this pose in particular helps bring focus and clarity Feeling those three areas, belly, ribs, heart, heart, ribs, belly. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. you like last couple of breaths if you want to extend your legs down out so that the heels are down and the toes point up stretching the front of those hip flexors and then slide the feet back in push into the feet slide the block out cactus your arms as you inhale take your feet as wide as your mat and just windshield wiper your legs side to side then hug your knees in towards your chest give yourself a squeeze now we're going to end with two options. One is legs up the wall. And obviously I don't have a concrete wall or by concrete I mean flat. <laughs> but if you have a wall, I want you to come near it. So option one is legs up the wall. Option two is meditation. Okay. 
So this is how we're going to end today and take a few minutes. So we're going to be ending in this position. So if you're doing legs up the wall, imagine this is my wall. I usually bring one hip to the side. You're welcome to put a blanket here underneath your butt, and then you will slide your legs up the wall. Okay, so you can stay here, and then you'll make your arms comfortable. And those of you that want to do a seated meditation, um, you can use your block or anything that you would like to sit on and come into meditation. So I want you to find the position that for you, you feel like would help, right? This is yoga is healing is about listening to our bodies, which pose or which position. And if neither of the ones options I gave you feel like the right option for you and you'd prefer just Shavasana, take Shavasana. So as you find your position, if you'd like, soften your gaze or even close your eyes. Come back to those three areas of the breath, belly, ribs, heart, heart, ribs, belly. Using the mantra, if you like, breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. So we're going to have the next couple of minutes to just be here in this moment. Allowing your body to absorb the alchemy of the different movements that we have done. And also practice your teaching the mind how to be present in the moment. Acknowledging that a lot of our anxiety is often worry or stress about either things from our past or things from our future. It's often said that depression kind of is more in the realm of folks who worry about the past and anxiety is more about the future. In any case, this practice is very effective for both. Continue with the mantra. Let it go if it's not helpful. start to slowly come back and if you have more time please stay longer if you're in the legs up the wall you might slide your feet down and bring the soles of your feet together in butterfly pose up the wall and then gently use your hands if you're up the wall bring the knees together roll over to your side and let's meet back in an easy seat taking our palms together at our heart space. One more time with the mantra, breathing in, I calm my body, breathing out, I smile. Taking time to 
consciously practice for ourselves, learning how, learning the tools to calm our own nervous system is one of the greatest gifts as it helps to reduce inflammation in the body, which will help to alleviate aches and pains that we have. So hopefully this will be a practice that you can return to whenever you need it. Let's draw thumbs up to third eye. This practice is both for ourselves and for us to serve one another in a greater way. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming to your mat today. Namaste.